Hi everyone, it's Olivia from Girly Bunches and in this week's video I'm going to be showing you how I have made this fingerless mitten. I'm going to show you how to make another one so we have a pair of mittens. They're great to have um, if you have sore hands or you get cold hands in the winter at home. They're great to have on. They keep your thumbs nice and warm. I know that some people do suffer with achy joints in this time of the year so you could even put these over a top of a pair of gloves when you go outside so you've got that extra layer of warmth. They're really easy to do and with most of my patterns I'll show you how to do. These are just like the basics so that you can take it and do whatever you like with it. You could use any different kind of stitch you liked. You could use maybe the basket weave stitch that I've shown you how to do in your previous video and I'll put a link down below to that. But this is just giving you the idea of how to lay it out and make what you need. So what you need to do is you do need to take a couple of measurements. You just need to know the distance that you'll want it to come down the length of your arm up until where your thumb sort of makes that right angle shape so where your thumb starts so you'll need to know how far to go for that then you'll need to know from that line you know, that point onwards you'll need to know how far you want it to come down to your your fingers I've got quite a short little finger so he's getting hidden away down there but the rest of my fingers is you know I've got a play with and I can still work and do crochet or knitting or whatever with um with my mittens on to just keep my fingers nice and warm and you'll just need to gauge it when you're making them and I'll show you what I mean by how much space you'll need for your like for your thumb but I will show you how to do that in the video I've just done a basic crab stitch to do the edging again you could do whatever you like it might be nice to have a scalloped edge which I've also shown both of those in previous videos and I'll put all the links down below but in this for, for this mitten I've just uh, just as it was a basic one I've just done some half treble rows and treble rows just nice and simple and um, I'm going to show you how I made it one of the great things about this this pattern is that it doesn't matter which hand you make it for it will be the same <laughs> for either side so you know it um it doesn't matter what I'm trying to say so you, it's going to be the same for either hand so the first part we need to do is you need to work out how many stitches you'll need to go around your wrist. So I've just chained a few here and I'm going to put that up against my wrist. I'm going to see how it fits. And that, you can see it's joining. And that I'm pleased with because that goes just around my wrist. So I won't know how many stitches it needs to go around your wrist and I won't know what weight of yarn and hook you'll be using. So that's how I would suggest you make it so that this will fit you or anyone that you want it to fit. So as you can see those two ends join up. That's where my start of my start of my round my chain and where my chain finishes. So that's how many this stitches I've I've used. So that happens to be 35 in this case. And in this case I'm using double knit yarn and a four mil hook but my wrists might be bigger than yours or smaller than yours so you know it's up to you to work out how you want it to fit you might also want it to fit tight or you might want it to be a, a loose fit so I'm just gonna now join those two ends together to make a very large loop so what you want to do is you want to make sure you're not going to twist your crochet so make sure you can see all of those little V loops at the top and then you want to bring it round So they all stay facing outwards and get your hook back in your loop. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to twist your loop as you join them together. So you can see all of those V shapes are facing outwards. And then you just do a slip stitch into your first chain to join the loop. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two chains to replace my first half treble and then I'm going to work a half treble into each one of those stitches that I've made um, each one of those chains. Like 
this. If you don't know how to do a half treble, I've put, I'll put a video link in the description box showing you how to do a half treble. But you may know that as a half double crochet. But I'm British so I call that a half treble. So I'm just going to go all the way around and I'll come back when I get to here. So there we go, I've just put my final half treble in and I've gone all the way around now, as you can see, into each one of those chains. And now what we need to do is we just need to do a slip stitch and join our round up. In, so I'm going to do a slip stitch into the second chain that I did at the front start of the round. If I can get my camera to focus, there we go. And just do that slip stitch and then that brings those two edges together and now we've got a complete round. So if you want to just check that this is going to fit fit you nicely you can just do this and make sure that you've got a good fit and like as you can see it's not too tight and it's not too loose and for me that's perfect that's just what I want so I'm happy now and I'm going to carry on working the rest of the pattern. So just to start the round just like we would do normally going to replace the first stitch with some chains so in this case I'm doing two chains because I'm doing half trebles and I'm just going to work my way around into the top of each one of those stitches from the previous round doing a half treble making sure that you have the same number of stitches of chains that you started off with and you know you haven't put some in where they shouldn't have gone or you haven't missed any out and you just work your way around so if we just look at this one and if I just raise the camera up a little bit you can see that I have done two rounds of half trebles and then a round of trebles and then just kept repeating that all the way up until I got to where I want my thumb part to be. So I've measured my wrist and my arm to where my thumb is and that's what I worked to. Of course you, there's nothing to stop you from keep putting it on while you're working your pattern to check you know where it comes down to you or you know the length it is for you so you can just keep trying it on so I'm going to come back when I've got up to this similar point here so that we can then show you how to put the thumb part in okay so I've got as far now as getting all the way up to my thumb so I'm happy with that so now what we need to do is we need to carry on using the same style that you're using the pattern well, I'm using anyway pattern so that'll be the next two rows will be half trebles and what we're going to do is we're going to make an insert for our, for our thumb so you're going to go all the way around and you're going to stop and when I and you're going to stop and you're going to do some chains that will go across and bridge that gap there so you've got a thumb part so I'm going to show you what I mean okay so I've managed to now go all the way up my arm so my wrist my arm and wrist till I've got to a point where I've got to, to my thumb so to create a space for your thumb, what I've done is I'll just take that off there. You can see that I have done a partial round. So I've gone, I've started and I've gone all the way around with the next row. And then I've stopped about, and in my case, I've stopped seven stitches before I've got to the beginning again. Now this will vary depending on how big your thumb is or what your size of hand is so if you just put your hand in to your wrist warmer and just sort of have a look and just feel feel have a feel to see what feels comfortable so if you think that that would gap would be too big for you so I'm thinking that that one might be a bit too big if we have a look have a look at the line so I'm just going to do one more stitch And then what I'm going to do is have a look and see how many I've got. So how many stitches I've got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to skip six stitches there. So I'm not going to work into those. And I'm going to replace the stitches that I would have worked with one less number of stitches in chains. So like I've counted, I've got six there. So I'm actually going to do one, two, three, four, Five chains and then I'm going to slip stitch like I would do if I was going to finish off the round as normal 
into that first stitch there and just do a slip stitch there. Now, if you put your hand in again, just get some more yarn up here. If you put your hand in again you'll, and put your thumb through that hole that we've made, we've made now, you can see what I mean. So we've bridged that gap there and we've got a nice space for your thumb. It's not pulling tight, you know, you don't want you don't want the circulation to be cut off. So you want it to just sort of fit nicely across that part of your hand where your thumb and your fingers and thumb joins. The reason for doing one less stitch is because what we also want to do at the same time now is work a narrow, narrower piece of work because your fingers here aren't as wide as your wrist. If they are, then carry on with the same number of stitches. But this is a way of bringing it in slightly. If you look on this one, you can see that it comes in ever so slightly. And it is just by one stitch. And that is often all it takes, just to bring it in a little bit. As you work, <coughs> excuse me, as you work up this part, we can take it in further if you need to. So I'll show you how to do that. So now we've done that, what we need to do now is carry on working around but we're going to work into those stitches on that ch on on that chain so I shall come back when I'm about to work into those stitches there. So now you can see I've got round to the part where I'm going to start working into those chains and then you would just carry on and work that you know make the join and carry on working around as normal so you can see there we've got that nice hole. So just carry on with your normal stitch that you're working and just do however many you've made like that and then I can slip stitch into that second chain there and I'm just going to take my hook out and I'm just going to see how that feels and you can do this all the time that you're making your your mittens you can see if that's the right size if that was too tight for you then you could just adjust it now now would be a good time to do that and um, yeah I'm pretty happy with that so I'm going to carry on working my pattern until I get to the point where my little finger disappears or <laughs> because I have little tiny little fingers much shorter than the rest of my fingers but um, if you wanted yours to stop further then that's where you would stop where you're comfortable with so I'm going to just do a couple of rounds and if you need to decrease, I've shown you how to decrease before, so here is a stitch there that I've decreased, you can see I've made that into one, so it was two together and I've put a link in the description box on how to do that because I've done a video dedicated to decreasing stitches and it, this part now is a question of just keep doing a few rounds, trying it back on, see how it fits. If you need to make it a bit narrower, then you need to do a decrease. If you're going to do a decrease, I would recommend doing it at the sides. So you work out where, you know, you, you know where your sides are now because we've got that thumb hole in. So that will be on either side of here. So that's, you know, that's, you only need to do a couple in either side just to bring it in ever so slightly but again it's how how your hand is <laughs> but most hands are the same okay so I'm just going to come back when I'm going to have done the top part for my fingers and then I'm going to show you how to put that thumb part in so there we go ready to start putting the thumb piece in now which is just going to be this bit on this one so you can see ever so slightly how it's tapered in just enough just so that it's not too loose around the fingers. And if I just try it on, I can see that I'm happy with how high it's come up and I've got a nice thumb size here to work around. And it comes a nice way down my arm to keep my little armies and my wrists warm. <laughs> okay, so starting to work on the thumb piece. So I'm just gonna take my, my yarn and I'm gonna attach it to my hook like I would normally do. So we're ready to work now. So we want to make sure our stitches are facing outwards. So as we normally do, we start on the right hand side and work our way around. Obviously you can start at any point and work your way around, but I'm just going to start here. So I'm starting with the top of the, the wrist warmer at the bottom. 
and I'm going to put my hook into that bottom of that stitch that we worked that bottom stitch for, so those were the chains that we worked our way across I'm just going to put that in I'm going to just do a slip stitch just to attach the yarn and that's why we worked into those chain stitches so that we could work our way around placing the stitches in a dest in a proper place. If we just worked into the loop we wouldn't have anything to work into so that's why we've done that. So I'm just going to do one chain and I'm going to do a double crochet into the same space so you may know that as a single but again I'm British so I call that a, a double crochet and then I'm just going to work double crochets into every stitch that I come across until I get to that corner bit. Let me just zoom in a little bit. And again there. And I've got that corner part there so I'm just going to work into that side stitch, that side of that stitch there. Another double crochet and then again start working my way into the top of the stitches that were already there. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm holding this at a bit of a funny angle, but um, I'm sure you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And get around the bottom part. I'm going to work into that side stitch there. Sorry, there. That's where that side stitch is. Just there. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch into the top of that double crochet there. I'm just going to have a look. So, so far, what we've done is just neatened off the edge. And then what we're going to do, see it sticks out a little bit, and then we're just going to keep going round. So if I have a look at this one and see how many rounds I did, because I've forgotten now. <laughs> so it looks like I've done one, two, three, four, five, five rounds. So that's all you're going to do. You're just going to work your way round until until you're happy with the length that it is. You may want to do more. So I'm just going to do one chain and then a double into the same space and just keep working my way around. This, the next round will be easier because you've already made a round to work into. So there we go, thumb piece done and I'm just checking them now, both hands with them on just to make sure that I've got them even and I think by the time I've put my edging on this round that's going to be pretty well much the same and I'm very happy with that. So I'm going to do that and then I will sew in all my ends and I will come back and tell you how you can make them different. <laughs> there we go, all ends sewn in, edging done, just did a simple crab stitch around the edge like I did with all of the edges on, on both mittens and I'm very pleased with my new mittens. So I hope you found this video helpful. So I'll have to zoom out a little bit. Okay, you can see it all. There are lots of different ways you can make these with different stitches. You, like I said, you could use the basket weave stitch, would give you a little bit of extra thickness if you were using the not so thick yarn. You can do all sorts of different edges. You can make them as long as you like or as short as you like. These obviously don't have to come down as far as this. You can make the thumb longer. You can make it shorter. And that's so great about being able to make things for yourself. You can make them exactly how you want them to be. Now these are obviously a very plain design and I could maybe jazz them up by putting a crochet flower on the back when I've got plenty of videos on how to make crochet flowers so I shall put those, I think they're in a playlist so I'll put that playlist down below so you can see that. Um, yeah, make them however you want them to make be. You could even incorporate some granny squares into this. You could just maybe do a band of granny squares at the top here and join them as you go along to the bottom part. I say entirely up to you, you make them exactly how you want and if you had some nice variegated yarn that might be quite nice too because you'll get sort of different stripes and different patterns 
suppose they work the way up so if you wanted to do a simple stitch like I've done just two rows of half trebles and then a treble you know just makes it a lovely simple thing to do these are very quick to make and would be brilliant as last minute gifts, uh, Christmas gifts if you're still looking for things to do for Christmas gifts so I shall put that in the play this video in that playlist of other things that you could make as Christmas gifts like I say I really hope you found this video helpful I'd love a thumbs up if you did and why not press that subscribe button and um, join us in our crochet adventures so I shall be back very soon with another video and until then keep your fingers warm and take care bye